Ares was very rude. Sheepishly, the messenger explains that his ruler is not known for a clear head in matters of diplomacy. So what's his deal? He is the pioneer. He's married. He is currently a general of a warrior. He's got the zealot archetype. He's got a charisma four, but a wisdom of minus two. I don't think his helmet is protecting his hel helm or his head well enough. I want nothing to do with this madman. So this would give us plus one legitimacy. Um, he would become estranged from me, so we wouldn't have a very good relationship. Or perhaps we can earn his favor with support. It costs me 60 military training, which we have a lot of we're not really using right now. He would become endeared to me. Or if we were cruel, we could write a reply that sows his further paranoia. Which would be awesome, because it would give us plus one wisdom, plus two science per turn. Um, he'd become jealous of us, but we're not cruel. Or he could pretend it never happened, which would give us seven orders per presumably this turn, and he'd be disappointed in us. I mean, I talked about wanting more orders, but it's only one turn. I don't know. I kind of want legitimacy. Done. So we're at 41. It's not much, but we want to build up. City site there. There'll be another city site here when we clear out all the barbarian stuff. And then there's the one to the south. But I don't think anyone's going to ninja this one from us. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to head over in this general direction. Um, and then we'll figure out where we're going to actually settle once we get a little bit closer. So this worker, we're going to send over to Elephantine. Pack your trunks! Uh, and this warrior worker has completed the Shrine of Nath. Now, the game is suggesting that we build some barracks over here. We don't have any yet. I'm kind of curious as to what they do. On the other hand, we might just want to build mines or something. As I say, for production. But it's not giving us production. Oh, yeah, and then there's roads. Row ads. Now, I think it's a, this is connected to its capital. Maybe just because of who it is. So, by, because of being connected to the capital, it has plus 2 growth, minus 20% income. Hold V to see tiles connected to your capital. Wait, or is that a broken connection? And it's saying if it was connected. It's saying it is connected. I mean, obviously that is my capital. But it's, this one is not saying connected. Okay, no, right. This one is the family that auto-connects to the capital. So it doesn't need a road. But this one does? So I think these yellow tiles, it's, it's actually, I think it's these yellow tiles are saying it's not actually connected to our capital. I think the green tiles are. So everything along the river and apparently along the coast. Oh, that's super cool. So when we build this city, it's automatically going to be connected to my capital. So I think these tiles are not actually connected to my tile, but the city is counting as if, because it's Ramicide. Okay. I feel like this should probably be green or something, but I guess it can't be because another... I'm assuming if I built another city, let's say we clear out the Danes, built a city here, and built a road from our new town here to Memphis, I'm betting the new town wouldn't count as being connected. Because it doesn't get the piggyback on that. That's just my guess. I don't actually know. So I'm not going to worry about building roads over here right now. Um, Hamlet. This gives us money. And it does level up. So it upgrades to a village in 20 years. And that is a very Civ 4 thing. Where you would build villages and then they would upgrade over the years to make more and more and more money. So it was really good long-term investment to do it. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and build a Hamlet over here. Mm -hmm. To build or not to build a hamlet. God damn it, Karen. <laughs> Babylonia is going to start building the pyramids. We need, we would need, yeah, we would need way too much stone. Yeah, we can't, because I think we need 600. And we're very far away from that. Darn it. Okay, well, we'll at least move here. We can't build the city this term. I guess we could maybe with orders, but we ain't gonna. Um, so this guy here should, maybe he should build roads on the way to Elephantine. We have another worker here. I'm just going to start... Oh! What? Why is build road not an option? Do you start it inside the territory and tell it where it goes? So it's not per tile? Which, don't get me wrong, would be nice to avoid micro, but... Um, okay, well, we'll find out. I'll just keep moving you over here. So it's still not road as an option here. You have to start adjacent to the city, maybe. Needs to start next to a city. There you go. Um, so we can build a camp here. I mean, it's not too impressive, but it does, you know, 
take advantage of camels, enables trappers. I don't know. Right, here's a religious unit. Establish theology. Need a state religion. Consumes a unit. Spread it. Already has it. Yeah, convert. That's not a thing. And then this is a urban building. Generates culture at a cost for of, of stone. Plus five money per world Zoroastrian city. Creates a Zoroastrian disciple every 20 years. This is a disciple. So this would generate more automatically for us. It requires a holy city, urban lush. Okay, we can see everywhere it goes. So I could just build it in one of these desert tiles. Maybe I'll do that. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh! I need 400 civic points. Never mind. Okay, just uh, head over here and we'll convert the capital. <gasps> Goody hut! I used to be known as the pretty okay, but now I'm the good. And we hit 51 um, legitimacy somewhere in here. So we got, I think, an extra order from our legitimacy, which is nice. Geoglyphs. Nothing about the hulking dirt mound seem impressive at first. Not until our troops explore the adjacent desert hills do they return with news. At a distance, these primitive ruins comprise of a massive pattern, designs, and even zoological images made to be seen from a great height. Who knows what riches lie beneath the mounds, but to dig would destroy their beauty. We can create a national historic monument, which will give us 60 culture in our capital, which actually is a big deal, I think. Or we can excavate the search for valuables, so we get 120 gold, and we'd get 20 XP. Yeah, I think it's like the Nazca lines. Or, okay, clicking on this just opens the Wikipedia page for Geoglyph, which includes, you know, the Uffington White Horse, the Nazca lines, the Bungeal Geoglyphs, that sort of thing. So a bunch of those bad boys. I don't know. I kind of like this idea of the uh, the culture. Because that could let us level up the city. Because if we take a look at Waset. Waset. Um, so we're currently developing. We're only generating three culture per turn. So that was 20 turns worth of culture currently. We need production over here in Elephantine. Okay. We need you to move as well. And you. We'll get back to Elephantine in a second. Warrior, treasury. So again, these are repeating jobs. They give us money. Leads to treasury too. Wait, so can we, by completing these projects... So, okay, while I'm running this, I get 10 gold per year. And then after... So effectively what I'm doing is I'm converting some civic points and some stone into gold. Ooh, this guy was almost at the first level of unrest, except now he's going negative one, which is good. And then at least treasury two. Now, I, oh, the tooltip system in here is good. So this makes more money faster, although consumes more stone. Leads to treasury three. And we need better culture and things. Okay. Interesting. So, hmm. I think I'm going to build some military and maybe take out the Vandals. So there's Militia, Movement 2, Strength 3, and they get built with Growth. And then there's Warriors, Movement Strength 4. I mean, I guess we'll go with Warriors instead of Militia. Can they even attack? They might not even count as a proper military unit. Well, they count as melee and infantry, so probably. Yeah, no, the Tooltip system is insanely good. By the way, if you guys haven't uh, played Offworld Trading Company before, which is another game from Mohawk Games, uh, from Soren Johnson, it's really great. Um, it's sort of, it's sort of a 4 xy but it's financial. It's very different. It's very unlike almost anything. Um, I mean, there's a hex grid, so it'll feel a little bit like. No, it doesn't even feel anywhere close to anything Civ-like. It's very good though. You can check my channel for videos. Great multiplayer game. Very cutthroat. Financial RTS. Well, that's true, because it is real-time. I forgot about that. Okay, we're going to finish this punk off. There we go. Oh, it doesn't advance you into the tile after you beat someone. That is good to know. That is very good to know. Um, does promoting... It's got the little um, health 
sort of, well, the cross I associate with health, but I was like, is there any chance that promoting heals you? I mean, we can't promote you this turn because you've taken an action, but it might be worth attempting that to see if we can get a heal. Oh, and interesting, the warriors, okay, so training. So right now this city's generating nine training, but presumably by, by training a warrior, that goes away, right? That's sort of what it is. But it is interesting that the warrior takes iron and the slinger needs food. Kind of want to build a second slinger though. And they can upgrade to an archer. And actually the warrior can upgrade to either a maceman or a spearman. And we're currently researching the spearman tech. Now, um, uh, we can't put this new city next to a river. Someone was just asking about it in chat because the river's not, doesn't have the urban zone. So in terms of placement, I don't think it really matters where we place this city. It looks it looks about equivalent to me. Prioritize your order. Yeah, I mean, you're probably correct that um, we uh, I might be using my orders for the wrong thing sometimes. Yeah, it's the the blue outline might also throw you off as well because it sort of looks like there might be a river there, but I think that's our movement range. So we have our five families are are assigned. And I guess, yeah, the Amarna are following the Zoroastrianism. So then the question becomes, what do we want to found for our next city? I don't know. We've got one of each right now. Um, if we found the Ramesside city, it'll automatically be connected to the capital, which is convenient. So the Saite cities will grow faster. Um, opinion from distance. Whoa. You know what? I'm just going to do a Ramesside one. If we build some mounted units here, I don't know if we will. Yeah, so the thing is, I think the builders, I don't know if the builders can improve outside of our terrain. Because they do have the ability, if we have a certain thing, our builders can build urban zones. But I'm not sure that they can do just that. Your families are happier if their cities are closer to each other. So that's an Amasid one, or Am Armana city. Oh, so they would be happy because these would be two cities close to each other. All right, let's do that. And there's our ambition. We've controlled four cities. Our scoots have encountered travelers from a Ferengi land. Although they speak a strange tongue, these men and women appear harmless. They wish to greet our people and establish relations. Do we dare risk our nation's security? Uh, player contact, unknown nation. So avoid them, as we have enemies enough. This would give us three extra orders and some XP. Or interact with them and share freely. It would give us ten culture in Babylon. Wait. Oh! So it would provide ten culture to Babylon. So, guys, I'm going I'm going out on a limb. I'm assuming we've just met King Nebuchadnezzar and, and, and Babylon or whatever. Um, so we would give them ten culture, but they would get plus ten opinion of us for 50 years. And each year's a turn. That is pretty substantial. I think I'm going to go avoid them. We're going to get some extra orders and get more XP for our queen here. Uh, she's only 15 XP away from uh, leveling up, which is nice. And she gets XP. She's still leading our warriors, so she's getting XP from combat, which is nice. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up into the borders of Pi Ramses here. Um, what, oh. Is this still the turn where we've, we've taken some action? This might still be the turn we attacked. See, why are they recommending festivals? Okay, all right, here's what I'm thinking. They must be rec recommending festivals because when you complete it, I think this festival project persists. Is that possibly true? Let's try it. It's time for us to try to do that. We're going to queue up festivals. So when this runs, it's going to give us 20 growth. I mean, which might be useful for the growth. Maybe that's why it's recommending it. It'll give us minus 20 unhappy face, which doesn't matter because we, we're fine there. But let's find out if this festival thing sticks around. Uh, someone wants to see the family tree. Um, so there we go. Oh, man. Yeah, it is definitely growing. So here's us. We are still ruling Queen Hatshepsut. Um, and our next in line is still Princess Nefe Rure, who is a judge. And then her kids, the Duchess, Duchess Essen Chebis. Uh, what are these? Currently in line. Oh, yeah. So if we changed our laws, we could switch around the order of inheritance and things. But this is going to be fine. I do. I, I love this. I love this. 
My favorite thing that they added in Civ 6 that really made it feel alive and living is the civic cards, right? I really felt like that was a, cool because it was sort of build your own government, customize your own empire, um, and really makes it stand out from sort of generic various, you know, n just nations that you might play. Because um, unlike, say, a Master of Orion, Master of Magic, Stellaris, any of those where you build your nation at the start of the game, right? You, like, go through your, your creation screen, you pick your various traits, and there you go. So every time you play is a little bit different because you may have picked different things. When you play something like Civ, because you're picking some historical empire, um, when you pick Egypt, every time you play, it's the same Egypt with the same bonuses. Um, with Civ 6, when they added the policy card system, it was quite cool because you could really get a very different vibe and different feel depending on what you pick. Um... And it gave you certain uh, a per, the ability to personalize your nation. And I feel here the family tree stuff is really giving you that personalizing your nation sort of thing. You also have the laws. Laws aren't quite as flexible as the uh, the Civ Six Civics, um, but I think there's still a real sense of that going on here, which is kind of nice. Also, I like the fact that your ambitions um, you choose from two. You have to complete ten to win the game. But which ambitions you end up picking is really going to flavor. Um, your sort of short-term goals and things. And if they're at all randomized or whatever, I, I don't know. Um, the first two, in my test game, the first two were the same. Build four cities or kill five units. Maybe that's always the first one. Maybe they're always the same. Maybe they branch. I don't know. We haven't gotten there yet. Um, all right, so this is my disciple. I really, I do want to get you over here to spread Zoroastrianism, which will give us plus two culture per year. Oh, consumes the unit. That's a bit unfortunate. But let's do it. I don't know if there's any sort of auto-spread of religion in here. I haven't seen anything about it. Although, Zoroastrianism has spread to one of your cities. Religions provide culture to the city they're in. You can choose to adopt a state religion for your nation, allowing you to guide the impact that religion has on your cities. Religion can provide me with powerful bonuses I invest in. So yeah, on the religion screen here, we will be able to spend... We need we need to generate a ton more of the uh, civics. Increase civics by building courthouses and forums. Okay, we will see. We have We are very charismatic. Our princess is also giving us that. So maybe everyone in your family, their global bonuses really do apply all the time, not if you're just a leader, which is nice. So yeah, unlocking these would be nice. Making a state religion would be nice. But yeah, that's a lot of points, which we also use for laws and things. Definitely a, a, a big a big sink of things. All right, so we have a pasture here, which boosts adjacent farms, if I recall correctly. Uh, so let's go ahead. It is saying here adjacent plus one food, so it must be applying it. Doesn't, no longer has in the tooltip does it explain that it's uh, boosting farms, but I'm pretty sure that's true. If I freeze it with a middle click and then mouse over here, yeah, adjacent farms plus 20%. So I will go and uh, do some more farming around that. Or scoot over here. You are going to continue to move. Get some gold. Music in this is good, really good. I am actually concerned, uh, what if it's got licensing issues? I guess we're going to find out when I put this video on YouTube. Ooh, that is, that is actually kind of freaky. I probably should just mute the music, uh, just by default. I'm going to, I'm going to do that now, just in case, um, that actually would be an issue. I probably should have done it from the start, but it was awfully nice, and it was nice to at least experience it for the first time. Let's go here, pop this fog of war, because otherwise when we, like, auto, like, uh, issue some movement commands, our our units would do some pretty dumb things. Let me come back to you. So, can you save? Unused orders are sold for money. Oh. How much? One to one? Well, I guess you sell for 9.3 here, so... Okay. Well, I guess we will move there, then. Because 9 gold, I don't think, is worth an order. We have heard you might get copyright claims. Ah, yeah, see, that would be really important to add into your um, your uh, press emails. Yeah, so that could be that could be a thing. I mean, I'll try to dispute them, um, and sometimes that's fine, sometimes it's not. Depends on where it's licensed from. Next ambition. Oh! Oh, we get three to choose from. Oh, maybe it has to do with the families here. Okay. So, the Ramaside want five promotions... Now, it says I have 0, 5, so I'm thinking it doesn't count my existing ones. Control 6 festivals. So, presumably, I would need 6 different cities, each of which have run festivals one time. Or, stockpile 200 civic power. Yeah, that's not going to happen, because I'm going to be spending my civics. Tell you what, I'm going to take the promotions job. Okay, does not count my existing ones. That's okay, but I think we are going to do some promoting... Because we are building some more units, and we're going to go and smack some of these fools around. 
Yeah, 2,000. I saw 2,000. I may have said 200. Which, if it, if it, if I thought it was 200, I would have taken it, because that seems trivially easy, since I already have 200. So yeah, it was a, it was a misspeak rather than a misread. Let's cycle around the mountains here. Did, uh, is that the pyramids I see over here? Yeah. Well, we did get a message that we were starting to build them. Man, these minor tribes really get around. So there's certainly a lot more than a city-state. Too bad we're going to have to go kill them at some point. Okay, so I'm going to try promoting this unit, because first of all, we need promotions, and I'm also going to find out if it heals the unit. I suspect it doesn't, but we're going to see. Aggressor, this is versus Siege, versus Mounted, Vision plus two, leads to Swift and Hardy. I think I'm just going to give you Combat 1. Just generic some combat points. Okay, it did not change that. Okay. Again, that is what I expected. I am going to use all my moves here, because we want to have you help us take out these barbarians. And we do have to go to work on some settlers here soon. Uh, these are... The red crystals are gems. I think they're worth money. We've received a very strange request. Our Zoroastrian priests believe that with proper sacrifice, their higher power will instruct them in the knowledge of time travel. <laughs> Do we make a sacrifice? No, this is madness. So, ooh, Zoroastrians are minus 40. So I assume this is going to impact our families who are Zoroastrianism. So the Ar Amarna are going to probably be upset. Or we could obey the priests. Oh, it's just food. Let's do it. I mean, we already have an undo button. That's basically time travel, right? 